It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey, don't you know? Hey, it's also a show. Hey, yeah, tell me about Ramon Simone. I've heard you oh, talk. Oh, yeah. This, the, what a story. What a story. He was good looking in my book. One look at him, I knew I'd lose my virginity right away. He had dark <laughs> olive skin, jet black hair, with a lot of grease in it, so it went really straight. He had a tie on, a real shirt on, it was a suit. And I was like, oh, I want to eat the best part. He had a navy blue aviator shade, so you really couldn't see his eyes. Oh, man. And boy, did he turn me on. <laughs> How old was he? At the time? Uh, he was 10 years older than me. 10 years older. He was 34 around there. So he just struts in. Mature <laughs> in man house. wearing a real suit, wanting to sit at my counter. And he's not interested in getting coffee off of boobs? Not at all. He ignored <laughs> her all the way. He was after me. And he offered me a ride home, and that was the beginning of him being my boyfriend, much to my mother's dismay. Right. She didn't like Ramon. No. He, he looked different than us. He was too old for me. He wasn't Catholic. Right. He, where's he from? Uh, the best country, he told me. She said, that's not what we want. Best country here. I'm like, oh, I don't even know what it is, you know? Yeah, no, he wasn't for me, according to my mom. Was he Italian? Uh, no, he said he was Basque. Oh, Basque. Which is a Basque. part of Spain. He explained oh, that Basque. to me. I didn't know what it was. Oh. But actually, when I got to know his mother many years later, five years later or so, and was living with his three girls, we went to visit his mother with the three girls, and she told me he was Puerto Rican. He grew up on 145th Street, <laughs> not in Spain. And I thought, what a routine. I didn't mind that at all. I thought, what a good story. Yeah, what a yeah. good character you created. Yeah, because I thought her name was Simone. I called her Mrs. Simone. She said... Don't call me Miss Simone, it's Simon. I said, why is it Simon? His is Simone. She said, that's my second husband. I said, you mean, are you really his mother? Yes. It was just so confusing. And that's how I found out he grew up in Harlem. Wow. Yeah. He's made up a story for himself. But he made up a life for himself. Yeah. And he was, for me, at that very young, impressionable age, going to be impressed with anyone who was semi-accomplished and mature. Mm -hmm. What he represented to me is that you could be who you want. Right. So I didn't hold it against him in any way when I found out certain things were uh, a little exaggerated about yeah. everything. Because I thought, good for him. He's getting the whole world to fall for and he's making himself who he wants. And he became very, uh, I wouldn't say wealthy, but he became very comfortable building one family houses. And it was because he really had the gift of gab to raise funds, to get along with people, to talk talk someone into buying the house and adding more things to the house. He was, he was great. So it was a great role model for me. So what are you thinking at that age when you, when you meet him? Like, do you have a dream at that point? Do you, are you thinking of where you want to go or you're just going? No idea. Just to hustle? I had one goal. I didn't want to get pregnant. Right. Everybody in my high school at that time, just about everybody was married within three months after high school. And they had babies within a year, year and a half. And I, oh. I remember sitting in my house and going, that's not for me. I didn't know what was for me, but I figured that's not for me. I don't want to stay in Edgewater my whole life and have children. And I don't know why I felt that way, because my mother was a very loving mother and ran a very good household, so you'd think I would have wanted to emulate that. Yeah. But I didn't identify with that. And Ramon presented another life to me in New York City. Yeah, yeah. an escape. Where yeah. did he take you first, do you remember? Barbizon Hotel for Women. It paid for it for a week which was really nice. My mother didn't like that either. She said he, he was turning me into a prostitute, which was ridiculous. <laughs> he wasn't. But he gave me $100, uh -huh. crisp, crisp $100 bill. I still remember the sound when he pa passed it to me. Yeah. And he said, go buy yourself a real New York outfit. That's pretty sexy. <laughs> it's so storybook. Yeah. It well, really... well, I felt like I was in a storybook from yeah. that day forward because I went to Bloomingdale's, which is four blocks south on Lexington, and I bought myself top to bottom a lavender outfit, and I felt like the it girl. Yeah. Know? Oh man. Yeah. So Did you it feel was like comfortable immediately, like when you're walking down the street. I belong in here. Outfit, like I was singing Georgia girl. <laughs> hey there, Georgia. Girl. I was the it girl. You know, like Mary Tyler Moore in that day. Watch me, watch me. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Probably because somebody else was paying my bill, and I didn't have to worry about rent for that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there is something about this town. Yes. Some people never get a handle on it. And some yeah. people know immediately 
But this you is think it's that black and white? People don't have to grow into it or anything. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's mm. a, there's an instinct. There's like a there's a this is for me person that says this is for me. A yeah, bring it on. Yeah. yeah. But it is a great town. I mean, what I noticed about this town right away, and I've never changed my mind on it, it really is welcoming to the newcomer. Yeah. That's one. And the other thing I really like about it, it didn't, well, from where I sat anyway, I seem to think that it didn't care who you were, where you're from, what your credentials are. You know, it's just a town yeah. that's practical. Like, what, do you, what can you do for me? That's right. what, they, what the town wanted. What could you do? Yeah. You, even yeah. when you went on the job interviews, can you type? Do you know shorthand? Do you know? <laughs> you know, it was just very practical. And yeah. that was very appealing to me. Nothing esoteric about it. Right. Yeah. And if you were already, as a young kid, working really hard and... Just another job. And you got the 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 wit and the wherewithal from being in a big family. It's yeah. Just like, you're kind of like... It was a it bigger was town. Like a prep school for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it was yeah. a large prep school because I could go into... A, any building I wanted that had an apartment for rent and I could open the door, get the key from the super, the doorman, open the door. Like, it's like all of New York belonged to me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it man. just didn't even seem like work. And that's what he did. He was in... No, he was building one-family houses in New Jersey when I met him. And he stayed in New Jersey building one-family houses. Oh, so how, yeah. do, so how did you start the beveling? Yeah. He gave me $1,000 as a loan and he said he would own 51% and I'd own 49%. And that seemed fine to me. And I ran the brokerage business, and he continued in his business of building houses. Yeah. But the brokerage business, did you build it from scratch? Or yes. Well, with $1,000, that counts. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. At first, it was just me. But it was I, under his guidance, was he saying? Well, he is, always gave me guidance. A, Both, basically, I have to tell you, the guidance he gave me was interesting. You can do it. That's about it. That's it. You can do it. You're smart. You can do it. Yeah. Maybe so. he just didn't want to do any of the work himself. Right. But I was complimented every time. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. yeah. So so it really worked out. So there was no thought in, in your mind of like, I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to do this. No, kind of thing. Just like, no. It was Ramon gonna, Simone's idea. Ramon Simone. Yeah. And if he had suggested something else, I probably would have jumped into that. Right. Because my attitude was I had 22 jobs already. I thought, why not? I'll try another one. You know, I'll get yeah. another job if I don't like it. And I didn't take it seriously. However, what I should have taken seriously, I had never worked for myself. Mm -hmm. The minute I worked for myself, didn't have to report on time. I was always in early. Right. The minute I worked for myself, I pushed myself harder than I ever pushed myself in any job. And so I was meant to work for myself. It was beautiful working right. for myself. Yeah. That was not lost on me. I knew I had found my home. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How quickly did you start having the people work for you? Almost immediately. Yeah. I made my first commission check of $348, and I only had $1,000, so I... Now had thirteen forty eight minus some advertising I was paying for, and then I immediately took my check and went and bought my fellows with the whole check a fancy coat at Bergdorf Goodman's, <laughs> and it was the best move I could have made because it covered up my clothes that weren't looking very good. Uh -huh. They were still from New Jersey. Nothing against New Jersey, but <laughs> my part in New Jersey that's not a good sign wearing those clothes. But yeah. this gorgeous, really, well, most people would say disgustingly gaudy coat. Uh -huh. Covered my whole body almost down to my ankles with the fake fur and the fake fur and the, <laughs> um, the bone buttons and the wow. But you know what? I was confident in that coat. Yeah. I knew when I put that coat on, I was going to be the queen of New York real estate. I knew it as sure as I knew my name. I could see mes myself in living color. And it started with that coat. I had that coat on. People were adoring me. People were kissing my ring like they kissed the pump Pope. I had a lot of people working for me. People were asking my opinion. I saw the whole movie in my head. And I really didn't think that it would come true, not for a second my whole career. Amazing. Yeah. It's better than a business plan to have a picture, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing because it just happens. It just happens. Not, yeah. Didn't happen it for me at the Fort Lee Diner. I'm gonna be an incredible waitress. I wanna yeah. I wanna run a great diner. No, I never had that thought of working for myself, really. Yeah. Yeah. Man, do you think that it's is it was it destiny? Was it I don't know if I, I believe about destiny, but yeah. I no, nah, probably not. I don't think people are destined. I think when I hear the word destiny, I think it's already been decided, Miss. Yeah, you, you know, know. So I don't. Hard, I don't think I play. thought that way. Yeah. yeah. And what do you attribute it to? Luck. Part luck. What if I hadn't met Ray in the diner that night? Would yeah. some other guy loan me a thousand dollars, or for me to ride home? I don't know. Maybe I yeah. doubt it. Yeah. A lot of lucky things happened to me. 
Yeah. Tremendous luck. I opened my business first uh, in an apartment with two roommates, which everybody got roommates through the, uh, what was the name of that old paper? The Greenwich Village paper? Oh, uh, the uh, Village Voice? Yeah, the Village Voice. List of roommates, wanting roommates. So I got Shit. two roommates, and I opened my business there. So I met my customers on my couch, and I would take them out and show them apartments. But I got a lucky break. Uh, I had a phony customer call into me once, and I sensed she was, she was not who she claimed. Just felt in my bones, but I also felt in my bones there's something important about this lady who's pretending to be a customer. Mm -hmm. So I pulled out the dog. Is that the expression? You know, yeah. I really went fancy on her. I showed her all over New York, explained everything, like the perfect dream agent. Uh -huh. And it turns out she ran the whole relocation department for Merrill Lynch. And from that day forward, she sent me every customer. I just was taking people in like, like cookies. They're coming. But meeting them on my couch. And I'm sorry, I got off course. I want to tell you about the good luck. Yeah. The good luck was I had so many young men from Citibank meeting me all day long on my couch. Right. That's a super. I thought I was a prostitute. And John Campagna, who owned the building, evicted me. And I found the eviction notice. But in meeting John Campagna, trying to convince him I'm not a prostitute, <laughs> always paid my rent. The girls always give me the rent. It's all on time, blah, blah, blah. I told him the story of how I was renting an apartment for a lot of money by one of his competitors. I didn't know it was a competitor. Another Italian man. Yeah. I'm talking a mile a minute, right? So now, I'll slow down. Now this is great. Oh, a little, no. little fast. I didn't even know where I'm going. Yeah, okay. You got it. But when I met John <laughs> Campagna, he was so handsome, and I convinced him I was a prostitute, and I said, you know, Joe Chifuni, I'm getting him on his rent, 380 a month for a one-bedroom. You're only asking for 320 a month? Because I told Joe Chifuni if he would build a wall between the living room and the L-shaped, we could position it as a one-bedroom and den. And he put all walls up in his house and gave me the building that I lived in, and he gave me the exclusive on the whole building. Was that a lucky break? If he hadn't Jeez. evicted me, yeah. I wouldn't have gotten my first listing. You know, that was my first exclusive listing. Jeez. So I had a lot of luck along the way. Right. Everywhere I had luck, really. Yeah. Yeah. I do think it plays a big part in life. You also have to work your luck that, like crazy, right? Yeah. But you have to have breaks. You, you know? have to have breaks, of You course. do have to have breaks. Yeah. I guess you'd make it somehow anyway with no breaks, but you have to be discouraged after a time. Yeah. yeah. But it's so interesting that you just kind of, it seems from the story you're telling that mm -hmm. you, you found your place. Oh, I did. Immediately. Like you had. But, you know, in hindsight, because I work with so many young entrepreneurs Today, Tom, yeah. uh, I really believe I could be an entrepreneur in any business now. I really think this, they're common traits that people succeed in business. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have them, they don't. Right. Well, so yeah. I think, uh, I'll tell you about it before that I want to say, but I think I wound up in real estate because that's where I wound up. But I could have done something in plumbing supply or legal services or uh -huh. something. It's all the same routine, you know, in building a business, kind of the same routine. In answer to your question, what are the common traits? The most important one, in my book, most people wouldn't agree with me, is the ability to take a hit. Mm -hmm. It's not just in work, but in life. I mean, if you can't get back up. Yeah. So I really look for people who, who I think will take a hit hard yeah. and get back up. And when they don't, you know, they never make it. Yeah. They might have the big dream. They might work their ass off for a while, but in the end, they don't make it. You almost have to be too stupid. Yeah. To lay low when you get hit, you almost have to be stupid enough to get back up and say, hit me again, you know? Yeah, Not yeah. literally, but I think it's that kind of a attitude toward bumps along the way. Mm -hmm.